So I guess we'll just start out with like um, the basics of the film, like what you guys originally thought of the project before um, I brought you on. And like I initially, you know, I think talked about you separately, let you read the script um, and kind of let's just all give our take on what the film's about and like what drew us to the project first and then we'll go into like the other stuff okay Alrighty, who wants to start not me <laughs> so i'll start because i'm kind of the creator of it um yeah. yeah so basically you know this film to me is really about a family that's trying to stay together during a very difficult time where they have they have a health crisis happening they have personal issues going on all at the same time so basically they're learning to what we call as our tagline, embrace unknowns together. And the whole kind of idea is, are they going to be able to stay together in spite of everything else going on? Um, so obviously because I wrote it, you know, it's pretty personal to me. So I don't want to give away too many spoilers um, as far as the plot goes, but you know, it definitely was reminiscent of like my childhood here in Florida and, um, you know, we definitely incorporated anyone who's seen the trailer knows that there's a lot of Florida scenery and just kind of basic life of living here in Florida um, was using a script. So that's kind of my take on it. Um, what did you guys think when I initially showed you guys the story and talked to you about coming on the project? Yeah, well, okay. So I was um, super surprised when you called me up. I hadn't talked to you for almost a year. And um, I was super excited because I had really enjoyed the script we had worked on previously. So when you sent me the script, though, I wasn't sure what to expect. And the part that I connected to most was the health crisis that one of the characters is facing because that's very similar to what I've gone through. And so almost immediately, I felt like this very very much like a bond and a connection with the characters. And they just seemed very real set in a setting in Florida that I know very well. So I could just see it come to life in front of me as I read the script. And then as we went through the production, I got to see it truly come to life in front of me, not just in my brain. So I just remember being really excited and interested after reading it. Yeah. yeah. And just, just to fill in a couple of gaps though, um, so we've all known each other for, I mean, Tori and I have known each other a lot longer, but mm -hmm. Hannah, I mean, I guess it's been at least a couple of years now because I originally cast you in a short film yeah. that I did like a year prior to us filming our feature this past year. So, I mean, you're, you are, you know, you have a lot of acting experience and like stage, what, directing, management. Yeah, technical um, experience. So, yeah, so I, uh, because of working with you and knowing that you're going into, like, theater and things like that, you know, I was like, well, let me call her up and see what she's doing. So I know you had mentioned something about doing an internship. Um, so that was kind of how you got brought onto the project. Um, and then, Tori, why don't you kind of fill in the gaps with you coming on the project? Okay. Um Oh man. So I worked with you on the past project that you have done. And I think that we just kind of both worked well together. We had the same kind of like vision on how we wanted it to look. Um, so then I guess that's why you asked me <laughs> to come help with uh, this one. And like the same kind of thing, I read the script and it just seemed very like, real and like a lot of people could relate to that and that it could like kind of help people because they can relate to the issue and everything and um I was also surprised seeing you do a drama but I really liked it like I thought the script was just really good and I wanted to be a part of it so <laughs> yeah um I mean, I'm trying to think of how much we can give away. Because the thing is, like, I guess, let's just assume that people listening to this, like, you guys have, let's say that everyone's seen the trailer. Um, 
which we just came out with it like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so it does, it does hint. There's obviously a health crisis that the daughter is going through. Um, you know, the parents, I think it's pretty clear that they're at least separated. Um, and so again, it's kind of this feeling of like, there's a lot of unknowns. And mm-hmm. I remember, I think my mom or somebody was watching the trailer and they're like, wow, I really have to see this now because I have no idea what, what's going on. <laughs> and I'm like, exactly. Um, anyway, so that was, you know, it's, it, there's a lot going on, um, but it's definitely something, it has multiple things that people, I think, of all ages can relate to because you do have, the story is around a family. It's not one person. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have adults, you have children, teenagers that are all involved, which to me, I mean, that's typical, I think of a lot of dramas, but it's, it, to me, it definitely brings in a lot of things everyone can relate to in like one story, mm-hmm. um, which is, it's a good thing, but it was also a lot to take on for, for us. Um, which is one thing I kind of wanted to mention a little bit because this is, you know, a podcast where, uh, I do talk a lot to people our age, like millennials, as you would call Mm -hmm. them. Uh, I know you guys are on the younger scale (laughs) of falling into the millennial category. I'm a little bit older than you guys, but, um, you know, like because we were kind of heading up this project together, there was a lot of pre-production work that we both that we all did together i mean i was on the phone with you guys like and literally every day right literally we Um, never stopped talking to each other (laughs) yes late into the night and early in the morning (laughs) i know and i felt like so bad but i was like i we have to figure this stuff out and so i was like texting you guys i'm like are you are you still available can i talk to you for a second (laughs) um and then, like, a 20-minute call turned into, like, an hour call. Yep, <laughs> yep. that happened several times, like, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's my dog is barking. Somebody set off something in, in the yard. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, so I kind of wanted to touch on the fact that all of us are, I guess, technically millennials. We're younger, and yet we had to head up a project of this size and work with multiple ages not just cast but also crew and so i know for me that was extremely scary going into that and there was like it was it's almost like we were living in the script because there were so many unknowns making this that i told my family i was like i am like scared out of my pants that's how i just described it i'm like i don't know i i really don't know what i'm doing but we're we're gonna do it anyway um so what what was you, you guys' like thought process knowing that we were kind of the three people heading this up in pre-production? Like what was that like for you guys? And and having to work with me knowing that like I hadn't done this on the scale either. Actually, touching on that because you hadn't done it on the scale, I think that kind of helped a little bit because if I felt like maybe I laughed a little bit. I felt like I was among equals. So I didn't feel like I was so far behind that I was constantly having to rush to catch up. So that was a little bit assuring, especially because both of you were very open about whether you struggled in a certain area or whether you were confused about something. So I felt encouraged to bring up my own problems that I was facing. So that was really helpful. But it was extremely weird because I we were giving orders and like telling people what to do, people that are old enough to be my parents <laughs> and, and, and then mm-hmm. kids young enough to be like, that were like 15 years younger than me or 10 or 15 years younger than me. And it was very daunting, all the paperwork and the budgets and taking care of all these things. But at the same time, when we were done, it felt so rewarding to know that we had gone through all of that and all those hours and that was months of preparation and then finally we had like the material we needed. And then I did go home and mm-hmm. sleep for like two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Right. Yeah, we, we all did that part. Same here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with Hannah. Like it was so new to all of us. So we were all just figuring it out together and like one of us would think of something that the other two didn't think of. And we're like, Oh, we need to figure this out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
And I, I just, I don't know. It was a good time. I really enjoyed it, but it was like a lot taking on something this big when we haven't done anything of that scale before. But it was definitely, yeah. definitely very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, I also, I guess they realized till later that most of us running this project, including crew, when it came down to it, were actually women. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of it, like, I didn't plan that. Like, I'm like, whoever is here to help, that's great. I mean, I, you know, we were even trying to get more PAs on set. Um, we had a lot of issues with that, trying to figure out who was going to be there, or schedules. Um, like, I did not plan at all like that, but that's just how it turned out. And so I definitely think it's kind of cool that, you know, because we are women and, you know, we are in many ways sometimes able to be more open about what we're struggling with and not existing about like following a rank of order. Like this person does this job, this person does this job and don't step on my toes and that kind of typical thing. Um, I think we were able to work together a little bit better and kind of just be more collaborative. Mm -hmm. Um, which I'm not going to say like there was times on set where I was like, yeah, this is a little bit stressful. And I feel like, you know, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing right now, but we are all just going to make it work. And, you know, and we, we did. Um, but to be honest, I kind of knew going in that it was going to be, I wanted it to be that kind of environment where we could all just trust each other and be like, this is what we're doing and we're going to go with it and learn as we go. Mm -hmm. And definitely by the end of filming, we were all very comfortable with each other and we oh, knew yeah. each other's mm -hmm. like personalities and how we work and what we needed to do to get along with everybody and make sure that it ran smoothly. So we definitely um, bonded during the whole process. Through all oh, the yeah. Yeah. That yeah. one, like, day or few hours that it was, what, you, me, and Greg. Greg the and, guy, yeah. Yes, and we were all just, like, sitting in that room just bonding while you guys oh, were trying yeah. to work on a scene, and we're just, we bonded. It was, and, and, and Haley, it was great. Was and Haley, yes. She we were was all there just sitting well. on the bed talking about life. Yeah. Waiting for the mm -hmm. scenery, right? Yes. It was great. Yeah, I remember I remember that night and that was when I was okay, I can't we can't reveal exactly what scene that was, but let's just say it was with the two parents, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that was like a major me having to deal with like I guess imposter syndrome of like okay, I'm, I'm supposed to have the answers right now. Like I'm, I wrote it and I'm directing it. And because I wrote it, I feel like it made it even a little harder in that particular moment. Cause I was like working with these actors who are like older than me, not necessarily more experienced in acting, but just like, they're, they're looking at me for answers. And I was like, everyone is waiting. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I was like, but you know, the good thing about that is because it was collaborative I didn't fix everything on that. Like multiple people, we figured it out together. And honestly, when I think people are, that's like one of my favorite scenes now. I think people are going to like it when they see that one. It's like a really impactful, heartfelt scene that I don't think would have worked if we all hadn't been so open with each other. Yeah. yeah. And I, you th throughout the entire process, you were working with the actors on the script and the characters. Because I remember you constantly be talking about whether they thought the script fit the characters. Mm -hmm. So they really were able to be part of at least part of the process. So it wasn't just mm -hmm. we order you and tell you what to do and you keep your mouth shut. But it was what do you think? Any ideas? Mm -hmm. So that really helped with the atmosphere, I think, in making it less stressful than it could have been. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Right. Yeah. So I guess... Um, because I kind of knew with prize for that going into this, um, let's talk a little bit about like pre-production, like what it actually took to make this happen. Like, I mean, for people who don't know, which I guess most people listening to this wouldn't know until we tell them, we filmed this entire thing, which is a feature film, in nine days. Yeah. I mean, technically, of filming nine days, we made a feature film, which is basically 
like unheard of, almost unheard of um, in the industry. So I'm extremely proud of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know from seeing the footage myself and being on set, we all do that. It's not, it's not like some, I don't know, even know how to describe it. It's not something where like, I'm very proud of what we did and the quality of what we did in such a short amount of time. I think mm-hmm. when people see it will be like, wait, you did that in how many days? Yeah. Um, and so, but in order to do that, I knew there was going to have to be a lot of preparation that went into it. And so that's one reason that we were constantly in contact with each other beforehand. Um, so, you know, I wa- we can just maybe all go around and just kind of talk a little bit about what that looked like in pre-production. Like, uh, me and you, Hannah, were, well, Tori, you're, you were the DP. So for those who don't know, you're director of photography. Mm-hmm. And Hannah, you were technically, we said AD, but... I would say more of like an associate producer type of role. You did both. We all did multiple things. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, we have every to single put... one of us had different, several right. different roles. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, we all really pulled a lot of weight, but um, somehow we made it work. And so what was that like for you guys with the preparation process? Were there times where you were like, wow, we're in way over our head? Or what was it like? Well, I will say I got to learn Google Sheets very, very quickly. Um, I definitely, in the beginning, at first, what you had asked me to do was just casual, like, look over the script, make a prop list, start looking into properties and, like, places we could film. And I was like, okay, this is great. You know, it's not too much. And then suddenly it was I needed to make costumes and costume descriptions and find costumes and find the props and build the props. Yeah. Get the prop list figure out which went into which scene, help you put together the, the filming schedule and the call sheet and communicate with all the actors. And I will admit at one mm-hmm. point I was sitting in bed and I was like, oh dear, this is a lot. I don't know if I can do this. But it just took a few late nights and a yeah. lot of phone oh, calls. There's, there's, but, oh, look at that light. Uh-huh. There's cool. light. This one's going out, so go ahead. But yeah, it was it was a lot of work, and I was definitely daunted. And then when I was on like on set, I had a ton of work. But pre production, it was very satisfying to see all the charts evolve and send them to you and be like, "Hello, Sarah, it is complete." <laughs> you may look at it as you, as you like. It was yeah, I learned so much. And honestly, what I learned is going to translate into all like my stage management and future directing roles because I learned so much that I could not have learned in classes. So it was really valuable mm-hmm. to me to be able to do that. Stressful, but valuable, but so enjoyable at the same time. And you yeah. killed it. Like you, I could not have imagined having that job. Like I, no, I would not have been able to do that. And you, you killed it. Like you couldn't have done any better than you did. Aww. Like seriously. You're welcome. I tried so hard. <laughs> yeah, no, my my life, I couldn't have done half of what I did if it wasn't for you and Haley on set. I mean, oh, you guys. Haley. Oh yeah. You, you guys were doing like oh, four to five Haley. people. <laughs> Haley, we miss you. Uh, you were awesome. You. Like yes, you were. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I I don't know how you guys did it, but I I could not have functioned if you guys did not do everything that you did. <laughs> So that was, yeah, that was awesome. Um, so Tori, what did you like learn or what was the process for you like? Um, storyboarding. <laughs> That's pretty much all I did the entire time was just storyboard and storyboard and storyboard, trying to get this idea like in my head because in my experience I've only really storyboarded things that I've written myself other than like a couple small school projects so I already know when I'm writing it kind of how I want it to look so it was definitely a challenge for me to take something that somebody else wrote and try to totally totally imagine it I mean shot by shot in my head and um I think I definitely learned a lot doing that and like how to do that, but it took (laughs) so many hours 
it was, I don't even remember how many pages of storyboards. It was like hundreds and it was wild. I was doing it on vacation. I was just doing it every day. <laughs> but I definitely, definitely learned a lot. And what else did I do? I storyboarded. I did, oh, the equipment. I had to do like yes. equipment research and figure out what we needed and what was in budget and all that. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it was a lot, but I learned a lot, so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, and a lot of our conversations was about, because I was doing a lot of producing work as well, and I'm mm -hmm. the one, I was kind of creating the budget and having to adjust the budget, budget constantly. Um, you know, a lot of our conversations were about what equipment can we afford, mm -hmm. what can we get away with, but also what's going to be the best use to make the script come to life, which mm -hmm. fortunately, you know, we did have a couple of issues here and there, but most of all, I really feel like the Florida scenery itself filled in a lot of gaps mm -hmm. um, when it comes to, instead of using very expensive equipment, we just kind of let where we were kind of take over a lot of the visuals. Yeah. Um, which was kind of part of the plan, but I honestly think that it, it ended up being even better than I originally imagined. Um, at least when, from what I've seen so far. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, now on a different note, there was definitely also a lot of mistakes. I wouldn't call them mistakes. But I would call them learning curves for when we all do this again at some point or when I do this again. Um, like, I know that you and me both, Tori, like, had so much prepared when it came to the storyboard. And <laughs> once we got on set, we didn't use a lot of that. Yeah. Um, we, the, the one thing that I would, if I had to go back and do it again, which next time I, I will at some point, um, is I definitely underestimated um, storyboards are good because I'm visual and it's a visual medium, but uh, if you're not good at drawing or like seeing exactly what you think it's mm -hmm. going to look like, mm -hmm. it's like it kind of just goes out of your head and you're trying to make decisions, which is where shot list really would have been more helpful, I feel like. Um, you know what I mean? Like, because I know on my short film, I did actually have more of a printed out, like, um, check the box mm -hmm. kind of list of yeah. like exactly what we're doing for each scene. Um, and because it was such a long script, such a large project, um, I think next time I'll definitely use more of that because that's when you ensure you know what you're getting, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, that's one thing that I, I definitely would think that, you know, I was like, okay, I understand now why that those things are important. Mm -hmm. Um, from the directing standpoint and, and working with you, um, that was, yeah. But it, we made it work, again, because it was such yeah. a collaborative environment. We, you knew what you were seeing. I knew what I was seeing on the monitor. We were able to make decisions and say, that works somehow, it looks good, <laughs> um, and we're gonna have to go with it. And then we, need, we gotta move on, you know? Yeah. Um, so being able to like, just deal with that as it, as it came, I think definitely helps. Mm -hmm. make it work the fact that basically the fact that it, also because we're young we're we're new to this the fact that we haven't all been on I mean I've been on a couple of I guess you would call traditional short film sets I've I know people some people in the industry I think we've all worked a little bit with some people mm -hmm. but I mean on a larger scale I don't think we've been on like we have been on Hollywood million dollar film sets which is <laughs> fine at some point, I'm sure maybe we will, but, you know, I think the point was that because we had to just trust the process and trust each other, we kind of made it, we almost made up our own rules. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. we did. And somehow by doing that, it worked. We had to think outside the box um, to do everything in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what was there anything that you guys thought you're like, oh, if we had to do this over again, um, here's one thing that might have worked differently or worked better. Deciding on one parking lot to park. 
um, the car <laughs> instead of doing what I had done oh. and tried to um, juggle between two different ones. Because for people listening, we couldn't park on site because we weren't allowed to have that many cars next to the house. So I had to have the actors and crew park in a separate parking lot and then shuttle them in my car to set. And I thought it'd be a good idea to do different parking lots every day. That was a horrible idea. <laughs> so just making my plan uh-huh. simpler. I think going for the simplest option immediately and then, you know, maybe adding complexity later when it came to food and things, but always start out with the basics. Like everybody would like meat starch and vegetables rather than trying to find all these different types. And um, I think that would have made my life easier and less stressful because the complexity of um, food and transportation on top of continuity and talk, which has got to be a little much towards the beginning. And I, once I simplified everything, it got less stressful for me as the shoot went on. But I just need to learn not to be so complex because it's not necessary sometimes. Yep. Well, of course, at the same time, you were also doing multiple jobs, so there's only so much mm-hmm. one person can do, yeah. um, but under the circumstances, you were like a rock star, so, I mean, oh, there's, yeah. <laughs> like, crazy. I don't know how, how you did it, but... Um, I don't know either, because yeah. I was just kind of dazed the entire time as I was having my mind in 500 different places, so I'm glad that at least something worked. Right. Um, and for those people who don't know, which is probably most people listening, when you say the house, that um, our main location was in a story, the home of the family, and we actually ended up, we ended up renting an Airbnb for that. And so, um, you know, I, myself, Hannah, we, we did a lot of research on finding that location. Um, we went through multiple, like, houses um, before we ended up getting that one and making it work with the owner, having their permission. Um, so yeah, so we, I mean, we filmed this, most of this, this movie in a traditional, very um, middle-class neighborhood of Florida on the West Coast. So that kind of made it, for the story, it was great, but for the crew and all of us working on set, that was a little bit challenging because it was a very confined space. Um, it was, yeah. it was it small. Was so small. It yeah, was, it was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like our our bags and equipment and food and like everything was on top of each other. Everybody was like filling up different rooms, and it it was a lot. I mean, it only had two like, two bedrooms. And um, no blankets. That was definitely challenging. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm just filling everyone in on kind of what it looked like. Um, so yeah. So did you already mention? You, yeah. So Tori, you mentioned already the challenges that you right. We went through that. Uh. With you or not? Your last question? I no, I didn't answer. Oh, okay. No, no, I had to think about it. I forgot to, to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the challenges and what I would... Um, like, shot lists definitely help. Um, I do rely a ton on the storyboard, but I definitely, definitely wish I referred to it more (laughs) than we ended up doing and I should have known that by Mm -hmm. now um because I always struggle with that but I definitely learned to make sure I refer to it more or else I'm gonna not shoot something that I really wanted to shoot and then I'll be sad (laughs) yeah so um so let's talk a little bit about maybe like, you know, some people listening to this might be other people who are aspiring artists in the industry, actors, crew. Um, but let's talk more about the audience side of it. What, again, without giving up too much away, what do you guys think is going to be like, 
kind of your, what's your, like your favorite part about the project that you think audiences are really going to like when they see it on the big screen or when it comes out wherever, um, what do you guys think everyone can anticipate the most? Oh, that's a good question. Jeez. I'm trying to think, pick one thing out of <laughs> so many. I know. Um, Honestly, so um, I'm sorry if you can hear talking in the background. I'm definitely in my house. Um, so from an actor's standpoint, I think the thing that people will be able to like look forward to the most is just really phenomenal acting because those actors, the cast knocked it out of the park. Like if we, there were takes where we would just, the whole set would kind of go silent we'd all just stare and we'd be like, oh my God, did that? Did you really just do that? Because it was so good. And the acting plus the script, it felt very really real and grounded. And they made it, even though it's a circumstance that maybe like having family troubles and health issues may not relate to every family, but the emotions that the actors portrayed and the relationships are something we've all felt. So I think they're going to be able to look forward to an amazing performance and just connecting with the film, as well as some very amazing um, pool props. We have to give it out to the little floating <laughs> flamingo. The little floating flamingo that yes. I think we named him, they will be looking forward to that uh, cameo. I want to say, wasn't it Wilbur? We named it the floating was. flamingo. Yes. Yeah. It was Wilbur yep. flamingo, and he was the star of the show, undoubtedly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so that's definitely yes. going to be something that everybody can look forward to <laughs> yep you guys got to go see it now you got to find where the where is find the, where the flamingo, flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> okay oh yes my God. I oh boy okay, go, go I ahead. have to, I have to agree I mean the acting they Oh my goodness. The one scene with, I'm not going to say what the scene is, but with a uh, Barry, like Aww. that came out so good. There were literally like, I'm not exaggerating. I'm there behind the camera trying to, you know, work. And I'm literally like trying to not cry because I'm like, this is so good. Like they were killing it. So they definitely yeah. have that to look forward to i mean some of those scenes in particular were just i could not believe how well everybody did and i know hey, also what no so you're talking about the scene with barry and ben right yes yeah yes oh my yeah that was that was really good between both of them i mean they really both came out of their shells in a way like as people and as actors and like oh, yeah. being kind of still a new director. That's something that was like, it's like, this is why I don't do what they do. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't do everything. It's like, this is what is natural for them. Like there's no way that I'd be sitting there doing that. Um, so to kind of see people do what they're training or they have been trained to do and to help them let that just like, happen on camera is something that I think was one of my favorite parts about this process is actually watching that happen. Oh, That's yeah. the crazy thing is because um, Ben, one of the main characters, isn't trained in this. And he has only been in acting for a little bit and yet his performances mm -hmm. were just amazing. I couldn't believe yeah. that he's never had acting classes or done things like this. And then he and Barry mm -hmm. Especially in that scene, they were like always talking and texting and meeting early to rehearse stuff. So they really formed a bond really quickly that you can definitely see translated onto the screen. So mm -hmm. it was just crazy. We we got a really amazing cast. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. So I did I cut you off? I cut you off a little bit. Therefore. I I was I was basically done. <laughs> I, okay. I was done. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, I definitely agree with both of you as far as the actors. Um, and kind of, again, going back to, like, what we started with when, in the beginning, we were talking about, like, our ages and being new to kind of this industry on, on this level. Um, 
I think part of it was just like us us being open to letting everyone do their their jobs and like everyone fitting together like a puzzle, you know, and like being able to see that kind of for the first time really when it's like you've written something and you're you're creating something and you're trusting other people to actually bring it to life and make it something real that now eventually everybody else can see. Um, is that it's, it's like matures you as a person and like changes you kind of as a person, not just as an artist, I feel like. Um, that was like one of my favorite things about the whole process. Um, but I was going somewhere with that. <laughs> I was going somewhere with the age thing, but um, yeah, no, because this podcast really is geared towards millennials doing things that people don't expect us to be doing. It's like, you know, not let's not put each other in boxes because yeah. at the end of the day, there's a lot of statistics and research coming out. And it's like, I mean, technically we're basically the majority of the workforce at this point. Like yeah. in time, you know, and so it's like we have to learn sometime. And I think a lot of us are scared because of our age group. We're like, well, we're not in our 30s, 40s, 50s yet. We haven't been doing this for years. But it's like, yeah, but everybody that's gone before us that is doing it and knows what they're doing, that's because they started when they were basically our ages. Um, and so that's kind of one thing that if, if anyone is an aspiring anything, director, casting director, writer, DP, anybody listening to this, um, if you're thinking about trying it or doing it, I guess the goal would be just get out there and do it because there's like, that's all you can do really. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, I, after doing it, it's like, yeah, yeah, we made a lot of mistakes. Um, there's a lot of things I would do differently moving forward, but if I had to do all over again, I would do it all over again tomorrow. Oh yeah, definitely. I definitely would. And like on top of that, like for people who are scared to, to, to start, that's okay to be, to start scared and start when you feel unprepared. Cause I don't think any of us felt a hundred percent confident and a hundred percent prepared when we first went on set. <laughs> Cause I feel like a lot, we were all feeling a little bit out of our league, but we still did it. And it was so rewarding. So to those who feel like they're not quite ready, that's okay. Start anyway, and you'll become ready as you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. So I, yeah, I think this has been good, a good, good conversation. Um, It's definitely good to see you guys again. It's been a few months since we wrapped yeah. in in July, if I'm not mistaken, in July of last year. I think it was the very last day of July we wrapped. So technically, oh, yeah. yes, okay. July. So yes, like July 31st. Um, yeah, I think that I think you're right. July 31st, some somewhere around there. The um, call sheets are still in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so thank you guys for coming on the podcast, for sharing kind of the behind the scenes of, you know, the film project. Um, for anyone that wants to know more about the project, of course, if you haven't already, you guys can go to, I think it's checkupthemovie.com. We have like all of our social media. We're still doing some crowdfunding to finish up uh, post-production. So that's where you guys can check out more about uh, the film, the trailer. And yeah, so is there anything else you guys want to add before we wrap it up? I'm just happy to see you guys again. It's been so long and it's bringing back all wonderful memories. So this has been so much fun. Yeah, yeah, I agree. This is making me just remember like everything. And it's like, wow, I'm very excited to be able to see this once it's done. Me too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. So, yeah, so I, thank you everybody for, you know, listening. Uh, you guys will probably see us on the big screen in the next, I'm hoping not more than like five to six months, but um, we'll just say tentatively like the summer of 
this year, which would be 2022. Um, I guess that's it.